Okay, what's up everybody and welcome back to Sunday Storytelling Time and I'm taking you guys back to stage 12 of Volta España and it's quite a rainy day, um, it's been tough before that already um, we're entering the second week of a grand tour and there's a lot of tired legs first 100 kilometers, obviously we have reached about 47 kilometers per hour and it was really really difficult day yeah, Sean, there's your average pace today, 47 kilometers an hour for the first 100 kilometers my goodness, my goodness, my goodness is right that's uh, a really rapid one we can... then all of a sudden you tip out the other side you have downhill and indeed a lot of it, good road surface, but quite sheer. It's a little bit damp as well, some standing water in corners, uh, and as you can see, a little bit glissé, as, uh, as the French will say, uh, as well. So watch out for the white paint, and indeed watch out for fallen riders if indeed somebody runs out of talent in front of you. To get into the break, I remember as the stage started, we had a lot of pressure to get into the break that day because the directors were already very sure the break would possibly stay away as obviously no one could be 100% sure a break would stay away depending on what the GC team decides of Primoz Rolik. Um, I decided to save a lot of energy on the day and I made a move kind of on the downhill which was a little bit wet and tricky. At the time we are running Continental tires and I did not have that much confidence with them on the downhill but I still took a couple of chances. However, old teammate of mine was controlling on that moment, Tony Martin. So perhaps the whole team didn't want to take risk or he just kind of let me sail off the front, which gave me about a 20 second gap and allowed me to get into the breakaway of the day. Push on no. out of the pack and give themselves some distance. No. So thank you Tony Martin if you're watching this I really appreciated that or maybe you were just being very cautious on the downhill as the commentators also said. So that allowed me to get into a breaker as well I had to take a couple of risks on the downhill. Uh, later I was joined by quite a big breakaway and to give you an idea of we arrived about like the first biggish uh, climb we did of the day. Um, which was really about, I think, 11-12%, uh, the first of the series of three climbs in the final. Um, I averaged about 450 watts and I was almost, almost dropped. I didn't blow, I was just almost off the back and I took some risk getting back.
black around him and we've got a problem for Schmidt. He's going wide, he's going wide. Is he going to make it? Did he make it? He did. Oh, well, they put some padding there and that nearly brought him down. He got away with it. Well, he did well. Uh, got the foot out there and just held on. Oh. And, uh, you know, um, you could see the padding there, but uh, not great padding there. There's in a sort of a plastic boarding or whatever it is. And, uh, it was a bed. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> You can see they, they are going down to rate here and yeah, if you're behind uh, the Royal that make the mistake, if you panic too much and you go on your brakes too hard, uh, then your bike, you know, you start to lose it a bit and the bike goes sideways and uh, that's where you can come down very quickly, so. Um, on the downhill, which is like three or four seconds, okay, so I don't want to say it's completely dropped, but it was almost kind of dropped and I pushed about 450 watts on the on that climb to give you perspective i was around about 70 kilograms at the time um, and yeah i mean i nearly crashed on that downhill um i was under i was had it in control i just, just probably lost some concentration and um nearly didn't make it and yeah i mean press of the downhill things went pretty fine we did the second climb sticked and on that downhill, I pedaled around one corner, crashed. And yeah, you can see my face. Um, obviously, I don't look really happy. It w could have been a good result. Philippe Jobet obviously attacked. No doubt he would have won the stage, but it would have been nice to finish in the top 10, but I made a stupid mistake and I paid for it. But Just out ahead, get to the top of this one. And as you say, Carlton, if he gets this 15, 20 seconds, you know, he's a really good descender. He should be able to hold on. And, uh, Igita. Yeah, Igita. That's a surprise one because yeah. you would expect him to be able to stay up there. But again, a difficult day's racing. Some riders paying the price. They are big price as well. So this is Schmidt, who nearly got bitten on uh, the descent, don't forget. And there's Roglic just showing a clean pair of heels to just all his rivals. That's Quintana in the green, nursing that jersey on behalf of Roglic. But I did not just pay for it on the day. Obviously, every single scratch or injury or bump your body picks up during a three-week tour um, will, will obviously exponentially uh, carry on to the next day and make you really tired. Um, so another opportunity wasted and especially you know when you're really mentally that tired you have to really be mentally tough to you know keep yourself up there it's extremely difficult sport um, you're not going to get onto the bus and everyone's going to say oh we feel so sorry for you you know you have to kind of lift yourself up and and uh, fight mentally and, and get through it and look for other opportunities as the stages go on so there you have it um yeah you can see kind of the numbers that you have to push for average breakaway in a grand tour and uh, the average speeds that we were hitting and it was all for nothing so another day wasted another day lost but you know you carry those memories with you for the rest of your life um, and until next sunday hopefully i'll bring you some more interesting stories um, in the Walter Peloton.